Hello and welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today's topic is building an XY sequencer. So what am I talking about? Uh, this is an XY sequencer. Um, we're not going to build Rene, but the basic uh, principles apply. It is a 4x4 matrix and we have different ways of sequencing through this matrix, like from right to left, from left to right, in an alternating pattern, from top to bottom or from the bottom to the top. So uh, what I have in Bitwig is a simple preset and an empty polygrid device. An empty polygrid device and not a note grid is because I want the option to drop instruments in here, which then can pick up the automation or the modulation signals, which in the note grid wouldn't be possible because the note grid, well, while it takes instrument, it does not have an audio output. So let's get started. First. Go to the ISO section and grab a note out, which we will use to send note signals to this device here. Then uh, we will need a phase input and a transport. Then go to the phase section and grab a scaler, which will kind of serve as our master clock. And we also want to hook up the play button to the reset. Now go over to data, grab a steps module. Instead of fancy individual buttons, we're going to use the steps module, which de facto does the same. It delivers individual values per steps, but it has a few advantages, even though it does not look so nice. So here, return the number of steps to four, turn off the internal phase and hook it up to our master clock. Now, we also want to turn it off or mute when stopped. Now that this is done, duplicate them three times. And now we have our basic four by four matrix. So maybe just change the values so that we have a slightly different pattern. And now we need a way to merge these signals or uh, to switch back and forth between the different sequencers. And we do that by grabbing a merge module change its number of inputs to four and hook up the sequencers. Now, how do we switch between these inputs in the right sequence? Uh, it's actually quite simple and I continue to be surprised how simple sometimes stuff is in Bitwig because, you know, I just imagined, well, it might work this way, then tried it out and indeed it worked. So really great job they're doing there. So, and what we do now is take the phase output and hook it up to the input here, to the selector. And now this is way too fast. And we also don't want to connect it to the phase output, but to the master clock. And now the idea is, well, first that we switch discreetly between the inputs. And we also want to switch the input after every four steps happening in the x-axis. So we just have to do this division, one over four, and that's it, it works. One, two, three, four, fine. Now we also want to be able to switch uh, the direction. So go to the phase, uh, grab a reverse module, go to mix, grab a select in, and go to logic and grab a button. Rename this to X direction. So, and now we want, well, we can drop it on here, but we have to be careful. We don't want this one to change. Right? This one derives its value from the master clock. And let's change the color here. I want this all phase signals to be in this uh, kind of violet color. For the second input, we send the signal first into the reverse and then hook that up again and plug it into the selector. And now we are able to switch the direction. Let's double check. And indeed, that's what happens. Now we can do exact the same thing for the y-axis. Let's just remove all the connections here. And let's think for a second how we have to wire it up. Uh, this signal has to go in here and it has to go into the reverse and the reverse has to go in here 
and then this one has to go into the input selector and now we should be able to yeah now we're able to switch direction here as well uh, which makes it already a lot more powerful we can sequence forwards backwards from top to bottom and from bottom to top let me drag it a bit out so that it is just it looks a bit nicer and less confusing so now um the tricky part now we want to iterate through it in a snake case but actually it's also relatively simple again um uh, we use a clock device we need to play head input but i like to have a discrete one for every instance now we also want to derive our data from the master clock and not the phase and now we need another switch which disconnect everything we need another switch to reverse the direction again let's duplicate that one as well and now let's think about this real quick let's move that out of the way so we have to connect it to this here and we need to duplicate the reverse module send the signal into this and into this now we can again kind of reverse the signal direction but we don't want to do it by button we want to to happen automated the master clock here has a second output which is actually a gate so when you read it it says gate signal that is high logic plus one for the first half of the phase ramp and we can use that one to switch back and forth now this happens too fast maybe we have to divide it into two and now let's see what happens okay we need to we seem to cycle back and forth now there's also a way i, I would like to visualize this a little bit better so i'll take this one and duplicate it and turn it into a split module instead um, we'll take a different input uh, let's take a button so i need i just need an input signal here and this is just for visualization purposes it will not do anything uh, in terms of the, the sequencing so let me grab a modulator duplicate them and you'll see in a second what i want to do so here we have this uh, mute when stopped enabled now i just want to take this modulator because this is automatable or yep this is um, modulatable so i want to take each of these modulator outs and turn mute when stopped off on the corresponding sequencer whenever it is active and now you can see what's happening well only when the playhead is stopped but um, i think it's just kind of a nice visualization uh, sometimes you see it a little bit jumping around here the visualization is not perfect don't worry as soon as you hit play everything will be synchronized to perfection okay so now we can press a few buttons to see what's what's happening maybe we want to start here maybe we want to do this well all sorts of things are possible now and i also want to be able of course to turn that snake case off so again go to the mix drop in a select in and we're going to use a button which we call snake okay to turn this feature on and off but i want to connect this to the lower input so that only when the button is active it actually switches to this snake pattern so and that's pretty much it for the sequencing part you could now take modulator output and uh, send a signal to any kind of daughter device in here or of course you could also build your synth in here then you could use a dc offset device and use that to send it to 
pretty much everywhere in Bitwig, but I encourage you to watch Polarity's video on that. He made one just recently. I'll probably link it in the description. But for now, we, uh, we want to generate some MIDI signals. So, so let's grab a pitch scaler because the value difference here is way too high. We have to force it to into a certain pitch range, which is uh, useful. So maybe here from F2 to C4 is a good range. But now the signal is still not quantized to specific notes. It might be somewhere in between, and you might think, well, how is this possible? Because we can, when connected to this, I mean, we cannot have a MIDI note which is in between C and C sharp. Is It's either or. But what Bitwig does, um, it automatically creates what is called timbre, uh, which allows it to pitch the MIDI note pretty much to everything in between, at least for instruments which support that, which uh, other Bitwig instruments do. Uh, but I don't want this. I want it to be discrete on notes. So I go here and grab a pitch quantize module. And it allows me to uh, pitch them into whole notes or even uh, a scale, which in this case might be, uh, I don't know, F minor scale. And I can also uh, remove a few notes because the, the whole scale is sometimes a little bit too much. And then hook this up to the pitch. Now all the notes coming out here should be perfectly quantized into scale. Uh, however, nothing is happening because we also need a gate signal. So for that, let's go back to data and, well, we could grab a gates module, but in this case, in these kind of cases, I prefer to take a probabilities module because it also creates gates. But in addition to that, it also allows me to set the probability for the event happening or not. Okay, turn off its internal sequencer, hook it up, and reduce the number of steps to four. Um, of course, we could have a different probabilities module for each of uh, the sequencers here, but for now, I think this should be enough. And now instead of hooking that up directly to the gate output, I want to route it through a segments because the segments is really cool. You can also use it as a gate module. When you set it up like that, it will now only send a true or uh, on or off signal. Now, the, the cool thing about this is that we can quantize it. For example, now we have eight notes here. And now I can, I get eight note gates and I can use this knob here to uh, change the note length in percentage in relation to the quantization here, which is really cool. Now I don't want this to be triggered externally. I want it to trigger whenever this probability module sends an input. And I also want to change it to one shot. Now let's see, let's hook that up and see if something happens. Yeah. Um, but one thing I want to do, I don't want anything to happen when the sequence is stopped. So let me go to the mix, grab a select module and another transport from IO and hook it up so that we only get a signal when the transport is playing. Um, now, of course, we need to connect these two bodies in order to get a signal chain. Yeah, really nice. And let's let's test the snake case. Now, as you can hear, there's a problem. I mean, here it behaves correctly, but whenever it changes direction here, it omits the next note it should play when switching to direction forward. I do not know exactly why this happens. I mean, it kind of makes sense, but still it doesn't happen on the other side. So I do not really know why it happens here. However, yeah, it, it does make some sense. 
And there's also a remedy for it. We can use a lag device here, introduce it here. And well, the shortest delay is 0 0.01 milliseconds, which is 100 thousandths of a second. And in order for it to work, at least on my system, I had to increase this lag to 600 thousandths of a millisecond, uh, of a second. And, you know, by all means, this is still better quantized than you could ever hope for or is even theoretically possible, uh, depending on audio resolution, I suppose. And now let's now let's see if if that's fixed. Yes, and indeed it is. So one less problem. Also, because we have a master clock to which everything connects, we can just change the ratio here to get a totally different division. Like for example, four to one will give us sixteenths. <laughs> Yeah, and maybe we could use some random device here, put it on hold, and trigger it with the uh, gate here. And then apply some randomization to this knob here. <laughs> Yeah, really, really neat. And um, yeah, just zoom out a little bit and let's look at this. Um, now, this part here is the entire sequence of logic, which lets us do all those different things. Uh, this here is only for visualization when the playhead is stopped. And this here is converting. No, uh, this one belongs here. Uh, this one. This here is then converting uh, everything to useful MIDI signals. And as I said, I mean, if you want to modulate something, just grab it, grab a modulation output. And then, for example, if you would drop that in here, um, we could use this modulator to modulate everything on this instrument. Now, the only thing left to do is saving it away for future use, which uh, I hope you do. And as always, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, comment, like, subscribe, and see you next time.